Hi everybody, Joe Broncato, the Airgun Scientist here at the Skunk Works Lab. And today, we're going to be doing Scopes 101. Part one, how to choose the proper scope for what you're using. What is a first focal plane versus a second focal plane? What does 34 versus 30 versus one inch tube diameter mean? And what does it do for me? What is a objective lens that points towards the object? And an ocular lens that points towards your eye? What's the difference? Why do I need to know them? How do I set up my scope for focusing for the reticle? Uh, how do I choose the right mounts? All of this we're going to answer on this Airgun Scientist. The first thing we're going to look at is zoom. 3 to 9, 4 to 12, 6 to 18, 6 to 24. What does this even mean in the first place? Well, the lower number, let's take for instance a 6 to 24, means when I zoom down, the picture is six times bigger. And then when I zoom up, it can go up to 24. So that's from a six power to a 24. Obviously, it's going to get bigger from six to 24, four times bigger. That number will be determined by what you're shooting. If you're shooting targets at 100 yards and it's a 22 caliber, I typically want to go six to 24, and I suggest six to 24, especially if you're shooting a 22. You just want to see where you're hitting. If you're shooting something like a rabbit at 10, 15, 20 yards, a three to nine or a four to 12 with its wider angle of view at the lower end, when you're shooting quarry that's fast like a rabbit and it's at close range, you typically want a lower magnification scope. Three to nine, four to 12. That lower number of three on the three to nine or four to 12, the four, refers to the smallest magnification and the smaller will give you a larger field of view, which if you're shooting at a moving target, gives you more to see. If you're shooting it at eight power, maybe you have your scope turned up to eight, it's harder to find that target in the picture and get on it quickly. So that's why some people will want a smaller number at the bottom scale. Now, if you're shooting targets, especially say 22 caliber at 100 yards, we generally tend to strongly suggest a 24 power scope or a 25, depending upon the model, but in that area. Six to 18, kind of rough. Uh, if you're shooting at 100 yards and trying to see a 22 caliber pellet in the black. With a 24, you get a little bit more magnification, which makes it easier to see your quarry. And if you're shooting rabbits, I like to go for headshots. Uh, it's easier to see how the distance between the eye and the ear of a 24 than it is with a six to 18. So this lens is the objective lens. It points towards the object you're looking at, hence the term objective lens. There are different sizes. As you can see here, there's 50, there's 56. And in the old days, we actually had, this is my old Theob and Rapid. This is a 40 millimeter. That was the big ticket at one day. That was a big, good quality scope. But you'll notice it just barely clears the barrel here. Okay, if I was to put this scope using those mounts, I'd have a problem. A couple of problems actually, because the tube diameter is wrong, but it's just not high enough to clear the barrel. So you want to know what type of objective you're going to have. That'll help you figure out your mounts. We'll talk about those later. But the larger the objective typically will give you more light gathering. So that's the objective lens. Next, we're going to talk about first focal plane versus second focal plane. What's the difference? Well, in the olden days, much like this uh, Bushnell, 4200, they were what were called second focal plane. And what would happen is, as you zoomed in and out from six to 24, that reticle did not change in how it looked. It had four dots going up, four dots going down, left and right, it was always the same. And you'd zoom in and out. Now, we'll briefly touch about dots, mill dots. Let's say we're using mill dots. Um, or better yet, MOA is roughly an inch at 100 yards at a certain power, okay? If you have a second focal plane as you zoom in and out, okay, excuse me, the reticle stays this big, remember that. So we're looking at a box this big. But as you zoom in and out of the picture, let's say it's six power, two, uh, a dot is from one dot here to one dot here is across a deer's eyes, okay? It's not, but let's just say it is. Now, if you zoom up from six power to 24 power, those dots stay there, but the picture gets four times bigger. So at two times bigger, 
instead of the dot going from here to here, the dot would go from here to here. And then you double that again four times at 24 power. Now it's half the distance to his eye. The mill dot or an MOA, either one, doesn't matter which one, will change in size as you change the power of the scope. So an MOA, a minute of angle, is roughly an inch only at 100 yards and it has to be on a certain power with this scope, with this old second focal plane. With the new scopes, the first focal planes, as you zoom in and out, the picture gets bigger and smaller. The reticle gets bigger and smaller. Hence, the relative distance between the dots doesn't change. Doesn't change for power nor distance. So with the second focal plane, either you got to stay on a certain power at a certain distance, or you got to result to some math, which a lot of guys, I'm a math guy, I majored in physics. I used to like not mind doing it, but guess what? By the time you figure it out, divide two, X this, that, okay, I'm on 18 power instead of 24. By the time you do the math, your target's gone. It's just quicker to just, first focal plane, it's there. That's the reason why I like a first focal plane scope. The math is gone. You just aim at your target. If you need more magnification, you crank it up, and a, a mill dot is still a mill dot, and an MOA is still an MOA. If you have to shoot three dots down at 100 yards, doesn't matter the power. You don't have to adjust it. Whereas on the second focal plane, you have to say, oh, wait a minute, that was for 12 power. I'm on 24. That's a factor of two. Do I double the number of mill dots I got to use, or is that half the number of mill dots? Even I don't. I have to stop, think, figure it out. Oh, yeah, the picture way easier to use a first focal plane. Just use the first focal plane. But that brings us into our next thing, costs. Well, I don't agree with powder burners and I'm a powder burner guy. I love guns. Uh, a lot of guys say the scope should cost as much, if not twice as much as the gun. When, when air guns are touching two grand, I'm not looking at a two to $4,000 scope, but some guys are. And they're out there, okay? Uh, the new Theos will be in that area. And so let's talk about scope prices. We carry the full line of Hawk and Element scopes. You can get a scope as inexpensive as $160 for a three to nine with decent scope quality up to $1,500 for an Element Nexus. And then it, the, the, the new Theos that's coming out will be even more than that. Some of the things that will determine the expense of a scope. One, 30 millimeters are generally a higher quality scope than a one inch. So they generally cost more. They have better glass, they have more glass because it's 30 inch, or it's 30 millimeters, which is like an inch and a quarter versus a one inch scope. Another thing to consider is how to focus the scope. Most of the new scopes today focus on the side here, which is a huge improvement from the old days of when scopes used to focus on the objective lens right here. This was called an adjustable objective, sometimes called AO for adjustable objective. Now, if you're target shooting, it's not too bad. You set it and you forget it. But if you're hunting, it's a little bit harder to get to this while you're shooting because it's just, first of all, it's in a bit of an awkward spot and you can't see the numbers as well. So basically you're just gonna focus it until it's there, okay? And even if you're bench resting, it's still a little bit harder to get your hand way out here and set it. With the side focus scopes, you don't have that problem. With the side so focus scope, you just turn it here. And an additional benefit to a side focus scope, some of them you can put a large wheel that you can use to accurately or fairly accurately measure your distance. So. If, for instance, you're shooting field target where you're not allowed to use a ra laser range finder, you can range legally using your scope. Gives you a good idea because once you know your distance to your target, now you know which mill dot to use. So AO up here, adjustable objective versus a side focus. Side focus will increase it. Money well spent. Most of your scopes today are side focus. There are some AOs still available. They will be on the significantly cheaper uh, scopes that we sell. 
We have good quality scopes like the Hawk. Uh, we call it the 14141. It's the um, best scope we sell in the $160 range. One thing that some people have an interest in is uh, lit versus non-lit reticles. Fair point. If you're shooting in dark, at this point, you better start getting a decent scope because there are inexpensive scopes with lit reticles, but you're not going to see anything in the dark. Uh, you, need a, you start to need an expensive scope if you're going to see clearly in low light situations. Even with the element scopes, I can see a world of... I mean, there's a reason. This one's 400 and almost 500 bucks. It's 480 and this one's 800. There's a reason. Uh, I was out help shooting with a friend and... Even though they're both 30 millimeter, the, uh, it has to outperform it. It's $800. You better be getting something better. And what you could see with this scope, you could not see with that scope at dusk or dawn. During the daytime, bright sunlight, really good scope. Really, really good scope. But when it starts to get dusk and dawn, that's where your quality is going to show up. And there's even one better than this. It just gets brighter and clearer. Quality costs. Takeaway. If you want a lit radical, go for it. But if you buy a lit radical, make sure you buy a good scope to go for it. Because if you're going to use it in a low light situation and you buy a rather inexpensive scope, all you're going to see is a red dot in the middle of your scope or crosshairs or whatever, and you're not going to see your quarry anyway. So let's discuss radical types. MOA or minute of angle versus milrad, mrad, or anything with the word milli in it. What's the difference? Well, let's start off with mil or MRAD, milli. Typically that means one in a thousand. Now I'm gonna throw the hard part at you and then you go, huh? An MRAD at 100 yards is 3.6 inches. Where the heck did you come up with that number? That's kind of obscure and hard for me to remember until I know where it comes from. One in a thousand. An MRAD is an angle. It's typically, it's not a distance, it's an angle. And an MRAD is a very thin angle at a thousand yards, one thousandth of it up is a yard. So you go a thousand out and one up. Could just as easily be a thousand inches, a thousand feet. Let's just use a thousand feet or a thousand yards. It's a thousand yards and one yard high. At a thousand yards, it's 36 inches high. We don't shoot air guns at a thousand yards, do we guys and gals? We shoot them closer to a hundred yards. So take 10% of 36 inches. That's 3.6 inches. That's where you get a mil rad, mil dot, m rad, whatever you want to call it. 3.6 inches at, a at 100 yards. That's what one of those dots separations means. 3.6 inches. Simple as that. Now, again, this is one in a thousand anything. If you're shooting meters, which we don't in the United States, which I won't get on my soapbox, but we should. It's so much simpler. Okay, but we use inches, that's where we're at. Now let's talk about MOA, minute of angle. Minute of angle, again, is an angle. It's not truly a distance, it's an angle, but we assume it as such. At 100 yards, a minute of angle is approximately one inch. And I say approximately because if you want to geek out, it's pi over three, or 3.14159 over three. It's more than that. So it's like 1.04 inches, okay? Close enough for government work. It's in one inch at 100 yards. So if you have the same scopes, one with MRADs and one with mil dots, the mil dots are gonna be every inch. The MRADs are gonna be 3.6 inches. So you'll have less of them on the screen. Another thing, make sure the turrets agree with the scopes internals. In other words, if it's MOA, make sure these are MOA. If this is MRAD, make sure that the turrets are in MRAD. Sometimes you will find scopes where the manufacturer has kind of cheated a little bit and they'll put a MRAD inside, reticle, but the externals turrets are still in MOA. So they don't coordinate. You want something that's like, okay, uh, a quarter uh, this one, for this, this is an MRAD evidently. One-tenth of an MRAD per click. Ten clicks is one MRAD. That makes sense. You don't want seven and a half clicks. Next, we need to mount the scope to the rifle. The rifle will define whether you need a Picatinny weaver or dovetail on the bottom 
or on the gun side, the scope will determine whether you need a one inch, a 30 millimeter, or sometimes a 34 millimeter tube size scope ring. So another thing to consider is the scope height. Now, depending upon the scope that you've chosen, obviously this scope is maxed, or these rings are maxed out for the size of the objective that we could mount on this gun. If I wanted to mount a larger scope objective, AO, or excuse me, a larger objective scope, I'd have to go with taller rings, okay? Now, ring height, that's one reason for ring height. Another reason for ring height is, on certain guns, uh, let's say like an Air Force, you need to use a taller ring. If not, you're like this, right up against the bottle. And it's rather uncomfortable. It's always better to have your head erect, straight, nice and comfortable. My thing is, rule of thumb, better to go too high than too low. Too high will not, this isn't like a rifle where we're shooting lasers. It's a bullet with a lot of drop. So higher rings will actually help that out at longer distance anyway, just the way the parabola falls. With a, uh, a smaller ring like this, it will limit you to the, adjust, to the objective that you have. If you wanna run a bigger scope, you have taller mounts. And also, if you wanna take a look, these mounts, here's a good little intro to those. These are our AccuTax. These we use exclus almost exclusively. We like these a lot because they have a level here for you, the shooter, and another level in the front for an observer that's looking off to the side over here. And they can see if you ha your gun has a cant. Remember, folks, like I just said seconds ago, we're not shooting lasers, okay? We're lobbing projectiles. And a lobbing projectile will fall in a parabola. So if you have your gun canted to the left, or to the right, the bullet or the pellet or the slug will accordingly go that way because now you're shooting in this direction, it's gonna go like that, or you're shooting in this direction, it's gonna go like that. So you want your gun perfectly straight up and down for those long shots. That's the reason for the levels uh, in these particular mounts, which we do suggest, they're really good. They're not cheap, but they're good. So I hope this helped demystify what it takes to choose a scope. If you have any questions, hit us up down below with a few comments or better yet, just call us up and say, I'd like to know this, that, and the other thing. So this is Joe Broncato, the air gun scientist saying, take care, God bless. Thanks for watching the video and please like and subscribe to our videos.